You are listening to a free version of Majority Report with Sam Steeter. To support the show and get another 15 minutes of daily program, go to majority.fm, please. The Majority Report with Sam Steeter. It is Wednesday. June 3rd, 2020. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps and steps and steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, we've got protests, we've got police violence, and we had primaries. Aaron Kleinman, the director of research of Future Now, will join us about the COVID primaries. Meanwhile, protests last night, largely calm in the wake of days of police rioting. In Indiana, racist lunatic Steve King loses his primary to another lunatic, who more quietly supports racist policies. Meanwhile, Bill Barr turns out to be the one responsible for ordering, I guess, the violence against peaceful protests at the White House Monday. Speaking of which, Republican lawmakers defends Trump's violent church photo op, but a... But does spur a Defense Department resignation and a lot of like, whoa, I didn't realize. Last night, cops held thousands on a Manhattan bridge as over a hundred folks spent more than 24 hours in jail waiting on a hearing for protesting. State of Minnesota files a civil rights uh, charges against the Minneapolis Police Department. Meanwhile, a Minnesota school board, or I should say Minneapolis school board, cancels their contract with the MPD. And the last person ever to receive a Civil War pension has died. Sadly, can't say the same for a lot of the themes that ran through that Civil War. And finally, a hearing on Capitol Hill. But oops, it's Ron Rosenstein testifying on Obamagate. The FBI found no intel indicating Antifa involvement in the Washington, D.C. protests. Shocking. And Joe Biden to attend George Floyd's funeral. All this and more on today's Majority Report. Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, joining us. I hope uh, folks are doing well, managing uh, both uh, physically and emotionally through this, um, you know, ongoing uh, just parade of 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 horrors and uh, sadness and depression. And uh, but you know, in some cases, there's there's some silver linings, without a doubt. Some uh, nascent initiatives to curb the power of police uh still of course very nascent but in um municipalities around uh the 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 country um and and also you know and maybe we'll talk to to Aaron about this a little bit i don't know if he has any data on this he's a data guy but um Certainly, one of the things that one would have anticipated on paper, maybe, or at least would have contemplated, would be how do Democrats, establishment, normie Democrats, elected leaders, how do they react to the gambit by Donald Trump to attempt to stir his base and to win this election because that's what it's all about for him by uh, projecting himself as a strong a law and order guy 
And uh, this uh, warrants more conversation. Did I say Indiana? I meant Iowa with Steve King. Sorry. Uh, this, this warrants more uh, conversation. But for many, 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 many years, uh, certainly through my lifetime, the specter of 1968 and 1972 elections have haunted the Democratic Party. Back when I started doing this, the era of the uh, ascendance of the blogs, there was this term about hippie punching. And uh, we don't hear it that much because people don't, I don't know if a lot of people who are involved in politics today don't really have a real sense of uh, hippies are just not something that you hear people talk about anymore. But um, that was because there was a huge fear that if the Democrats in any way were perceived as not for social order, if they were perceived uh, weak on civil unrest and crime in some respects and uh, if they were just considered soft on law and order because they were associated with the hippies. And uh, certainly, you know, things like Joe Biden grandstanding about the uh, 93 crime bill and just the entire 93 crime bill is a good example of that. Um, even Sanders, you know, w- was sort of protecting that flank at that time to some degree. And um, today, the reaction from top Democratic leaders is not, you know, necessarily where I would want it to be, but it is not, um, they're not cowering at the idea of being associated in any way with the protesters. And the irony is, is that while this, that mentality of that era has dominated uh, the left in many respects, the broadly speaking, the left, the 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 Democratic Party. Um, it's interesting that they are trying to run that same playbook. They're trying to run Richard Nixon's playbook from 1968, and they're doing so without any. You know, the problem in the past is that the Democrats have tried who have run that playbook. And or reacted to it in a without any sense of the context in which they were operating, and I think the the the, the Republicans are now doing the same thing and making the same mistake because the difference between 1968 and now are quite large. Uh, not the least of which is that uh, white people are marginally better than they were in 1968 in terms of uh, issues of, of race or that there's enough white people who are better, marginally better on the issues of race. We have cell phones. You know, we have like, you know, there's whether people were in denial or were just simply ignorant. Um, you don't have that same luxury to have uh, to be in denial or ignorant because it's so obvious today with the advent of, of phones and video cameras. Also, I would add Richard Nixon was not in charge at that time. So he could not do anything to screw it up like Donald Trump has by uh, exerting way too much violence and, and force. Um, and so people should be encouraged by that. On some level, we'll, we'll talk more about it. But let's look at this. So Donald Trump on and the the stories coming out. And look, you know, this is, you read these stories, these TikToks of how decisions are made in the White House. And in all honesty, I, I there, there's I don't know that they're terribly useful. You know, the New York Times has like a how this decision was made, et cetera, et cetera, and it. It was Ivanka's idea for him to go to the church, and who knows, right? I mean, the the people who leak this stuff to Maggie Haberman and all the other, uh, you know, reporters on the Times, they all have their agendas. 
But what appears to be the case is that it was Bill Barr. They, they had this plan to go and clear out the area, and it hadn't been done. Bill Barr went out to inspect and looked around and says it hadn't been done. Uh, so we got to get this done. And they had brought in basically like a whole mishmash of, of agencies, police agencies, federal police agencies, and seemed to have like redeputized them as like general DOJ thugs. I mean, it's really someday somebody's going to write about this and find how uh, just um, horrific it was. But, uh, and then, then he had them uh, clear it out for Donald Trump to go take this walk. It is, um, there was, by the accounts of mainstream journalists, not 2%, not, not 98% peaceful, not 99% peaceful, 100% peaceful. And we got clips, I've seen clips from uh, Australian journalists, American journalists, they're all just literally shocked at the way that these federal police unnamed agencies, federal police, attacked protesters, attacked them, violently attacked them, including the use of a military helicopter, a medic helicopter. It was a, uh, a Lakota medevac helicopter, unarmed. Let's play the clip of the Lakota unarmed uh, helicopter hovering over, dem- uh, over demonstrators. Um, and then we'll play the um, the clip of the response of, of 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 Republican senators. Now, just for your information, here's the helicopter. It is. This was later in the evening. That's a photo. We don't have a, we don't have any video. Uh, do it. Uh, at that point, um, there's no experts who have looked at that and said it was being used to do anything other than to intimidate uh, protesters. You're not supposed to fly a helicopter that low to the ground. It's extremely dangerous. Um, on top of which, because it had a Red Cross, the the sort of medic symbol, uh, it is a a breach of. Geneva Conventions to use a vehicle like that for that type of purpose. Somebody had died. You're in, you're in like war crimes territory under the Geneva Conventions. Um, but that wasn't nearly as, um, as disturbing as the footage that we watched, um, yesterday of the, the, the riot gear, the, the military police attacking uh, protesters. Here is the Republican Party in basically, you know, like one of these walk of shames that they do. Uh, the senators going into a lunch, all of them pretending like they had no idea. That I, I haven't been able to watch any TV. I had no idea of the massive protest, the most violent removal of protesters from Washington, anywhere in Washington, D.C., in probably generations, here uh, here is their their responses. This is like a parade of cowards. The president did last night the right thing to do. What the president did, the peaceful protesters that were dispersed with tear gas, he then walked across the street to the church. Was that the right thing to do? Was what the president did last night right? Was what the president did and what unfolded at the White House last night appropriate? Senator Roberts, was what, yep. the pres- was what the president did last night at St. John's, was that appropriate? Was clearing the protesters an abuse of power? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, I don't know what call that. I wasn't there, so I didn't see exactly what happened. But I, I mean, I think that he was just trying to make a point. Um, so, and it's hard in, in a in a polarized environment like this. So, you don't have any comment on what happened at the White House last night? On the what? The gassing of White House protesters. Do they have a right? Yeah, I, I didn't watch that. Uh, 
definitely have to know what happened. Uh, Senator Enzi. Uh, are you?